I'm here to show you one of my favorite pieces of property. I bought the property in late fall and it seemed to have been abandoned for at least 10 years. Despite the lack of power in a sewer system, there was a working water spigot. Tucked away in the deep woods, the property also had beach rights on a beautiful saltwater canal. I thought it would be a great spot for camping. Let me take you back. My first day at the lot was spent on cleanup. The place was full of brush and fallen trees. The first thing I saw was a pile of debris. I initially thought it was where the previous owner had been storing garbage, but it turned out to be a collapsed camping trailer. It was eerie. The roof had caved in over the trailer table, which still had dishes on it. There was an old wooden canopy that seemed like it could serve as a quick shelter, but it was severely rotten and the main support beam was completely broken. There was also an old shed that appeared on the verge of collapse, with its roof sagging severely. I was somewhat surprised it was still standing. Behind it was another shed made of plastic, which had already fallen apart. I spent the day sorting everything into piles. What was reusable, what was burnable, what would go to the recycler, and what would go to the dump. I knew a future project would involve that trailer frame. That night I had a huge fire that was right in the middle of the lot. It came in handy since I forgot my tent. I slept next to the fire adjusting my position as the flames burned down. The side of my body facing the fire was too hot while the other side was too cold. In the morning I cleaned up the fire and moved the fire pit to a more convenient location. After just one night, the lot was already looking great. The following week I returned. I salvaged the straight trees, one of which had already proved useful. I used it to support the wooden canopy temporarily. Although it would need to be torn down eventually, I can make quick use of it for now. Today I was going to open my shed for the first time, feeling a mix of excitement and curiosity about what I might find inside. I let my imagination run wild, envisioning discovering anything from a deceased person's life savings to a can of gold coins or even an antique Winchester rifle. I must admit I was a bit disappointed to find just a bunch of old junk inside. However, the good news was that the shed itself was in great shape. Now I'm planning on turning it into a bunkhouse instead of tearing it down. The only damage I could find was around the windows and the roof vents. I cut out those damaged areas and plugged the holes with plywood I had found inside the shed. It was dark inside, so I hung some low watt bulbs across the ceiling. So for lights, I use an inverter. The inverter uses the same battery pack as my tools. So I just plug the inverter right into the battery pack and the lights plug in right here. A single battery pack can power the entire day. The inverter is positioned at the rear of the workbench. Now I simply need to remember to bring along the battery packs. The next task is to add two inches of foam insulation. This will not only make it warmer inside, it'll also make it brighter. I also had to address the sagging ceiling. The plan was to jack up the two by fours with an old car jack I found in the shed. I would glue the 2x4s together and then run bolts through them. 
Once the glue dried, it would become one solid, unsagable beam. The bunkhouse was now warm and structurally stable. In late February, a late snowstorm struck, making it impossible to get all the way up to the bunkhouse. It caused extensive damage by bringing down numerous power lines. Among the destruction, it destroyed the canopy over my neighbor's trailer. Fortunately, he generously offered me the damaged panels when he replaced his canopy. They fit nicely on my bunkhouse. By April, I was preparing to paint. I cleaned the bunkhouse using a scrub brush and a bucket of soapy water. So before I show you the paint, I thought it was a good time to take a break for lunch. Now I didn't bring any food, so we're heading to the beach. So this is our community beach for all the property owners. During low tide, the beach reveals an abundance of oysters. I prefer going all the way to the water's edge to collect the oysters that have been submerged the longest. It only takes a couple of minutes to collect all the oysters I need to prepare lunch. This looks like a great spot to cook lunch. First, we got to get a fire going. This recipe for oysters is undeniably the best. Initially, we need to bring some water to a boil since we will be steaming the oysters. After steaming the oysters, it becomes much easier to shuck them. While the oysters are steaming, we'll mix together heavy cream, a tablespoon of minced garlic, and half a stick of butter. Steaming the oysters helps to loosen the shells. Next, we use an oyster knife to detach the muscle from both sides of the shell. An oyster knife is not much sharper than a screwdriver.
The top of the oyster shell is flat, so we discard it, while the bottom of the oyster shell resembles a bowl. We leave the oyster inside that bowl. Now we return the oysters to the heat. I'll add a little bit more water to the pan just to prevent the sauce from sticking. Now we simply spoon the sauce onto the oyster. Then we add a little hoisin sauce on top. The oysters smell so good, and you couldn't ask for a better dining ambience. Oh, these are so good. Nothing better than an oyster on the half shell. It's time to head back. Wait until you see this paint job. I didn't mind the green until we put the green roof on. Then it was just too much green. When I completed painting my bunkhouse, I couldn't have been happier with the result. The fresh coat of paint breathed new life into the bunkhouse, enhancing its charm and character. The following week, I returned to paint the trim. The application of white paint truly made it stand out. Up until now, cooking has been done on a propane barbecue or indoor on a propane stove, while heating has relied solely on propane. However, lugging all that propane up there has not only been expensive, it's been quite heavy. So today, I'm installing a wood stove. Wood is readily available up here, and you don't even have to cut down a tree. Branches and trees are constantly blown over, and you don't need much wood for this small wood stove. The following week, I returned to spend a couple of days completely off-grid, relying solely on wood stove for heating and cooking. It turned out to be the best spaghetti meatballs I've ever had. That night as I sat by the campfire, I could hear the coyotes howling in the distance. It was an enchanting feeling. The next morning I noticed that the game camera had been triggered. It seems the coyotes were closer than I had realized.
That day I had another project in mind for those fallen trees that I had saved. I constructed a privacy screen. So this is where the shower goes. And you can see there is total privacy as far as the eye can see. Remember that old plastic shed that was behind the bunkhouse? I pulled it out and scrubbed it clean. I had a good place for it. So this is the bathroom, let me show you. It's just a simple composting toilet. When I returned the following week, it was time to dismantle that old wooden canopy and it would make for another great fire. As the bunkhouse was really coming together, it truly began to feel like home. I had just one project left on my to-do list. I grew weary of constantly lugging those battery packs back and forth, so it was time to install a solar system. I hung a solar panel on the outside of the cabin. On the inside, I had a battery and an inverter. It was just an old car battery and inverter I had lying around, but it worked perfect. Now I had more power than ever before. I hung an extra set of lights outside eagerly anticipating darkness to see how well they worked. Well, so long for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like and subscribe button.